So we're going to talk about Kubernetes operators. Um, I assume since this is the CNCF meetup thingy, that's a file word. Um, I assume you all know what Kubernetes is. Um, so what are operators? It's basically Kubernetes handles by default um, very well. Lots of things like pods, uh, deployments, whatever, all the Kubernetes stuff, you, you're, you're probably already familiar with that. But then the thing is, if you want to pod, if you want a deployment, that's fine. But let's say you want something new. Let's say you want, um, I don't know, that whenever some pod goes online, you start up a database or you do something, something, or when something crashes, you, you know, get a backup or basically whenever you want something that is not the default uh, Kubernetes things and you want it to, uh, let's say, work on the same control loop as Kubernetes, uh, then you need an operator. So the control loop is that cycle when um, you don't, basically uh, you declare the state things should be and there's this cycle where Kubernetes checks if things are the way they should be and if they are not the way they should be, Kubernetes calls a controller uh, that then makes things be the way they should be. So a pod crashes, the pod controller is going to, you know, put another pod there so that the desired state and the actual state match. So if you want some uh, custom functionality uh, to work within that control loop, uh, you need an operator. Um, an operator is basically operator is not a thing that exists. Uh, it's an encapsulating term for um, a custom resource and a controller for that resource. So link, uh, what link? This thing that I'm looking at? Um, let me see. How do I open the chat now? Here. Um, okay, where was I? Uh, right. Um, so yeah, when you want to do custom things within the Kubernetes loop, uh, you use an operator. An operator is a custom resource and a controller. So uh, there's going to be two parts. I'm going to create a resource, and then we're going to create the controller, and then we're going to write a whole bunch of code from the for the controller so you can see what the controller does. Now. Um, I'm not an expert in operators. I just happen to know how to write one. So I can't tell you what are like, you know, uh, the best way to architect a controller and et cetera and all of that, but I can show you how to do the basic operations. So that's what we're going to do. Um, if you want to, of course, if you want to do something like this for real in production, then you should read something like what's on the screen. Uh, and, you know, and then you get a better sense of how things work. Um, so if you look at here, the first thing it's going to say, well, the second thing it's going to say is you should use an SDK like Cube Builder, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So this is Cube Builder, and before I start, I want to say a big thanks to Sally uh, Ross, who's one of the maintainers of this project, uh, for giving me a hand uh, with all this stuff. So this is Cube Builder. Um, I'll share the link there as well. And we, since we are going to build an example, uh, an operator, we need an example project, right? Um, so what we're going to do is a useless machine. I, if you don't know what a useless machine is, uh, let me show you. This is a useless machine. Uh, it's a machine that you turn it on and it turns itself off. And that's kind of what it does. Uh, so there are ones like this where you turn, you turn it on and it turns itself off. And then there are fancier machines like this one where it wakes a little bit and it makes fun of you and sometimes it's really quickly. Sometimes it, you know, plays a little bit. Uh, and so, yeah. So we're going to do the simple thing and then we'll see what we can do on the other side. Um, now for the, for the development workflow, we're going to use Tilt. That's the company I work at. And so it's a tool that it basically watches your file system. Whenever you change your code, all you need to do is basically save the file and everything is up and running in Kubernetes basically instantly and you don't have to, uh, <clears throat> you don't have to like build images and push uh, stuff on Docker and keep it up, you don't have to do any of that. So we're gonna use this so we can have a better, uh, so we can have more fun instead of doing paperwork uh, the whole time. 
Uh, if things are tiny on the screen, please uh, uh, leave a comment on the chat so I can make them bigger. Um, so let's get started. We're going to use Cube Builder. Um, let me see. I hope this is big enough. Uh, which link, Carol? You have to tell me which link you want. Uh, the last one was that tilt. Okay. There you go. If you decide to start using tilt at work, my employers are going to be very happy. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to start here with Cube Builder um, init. And if I can type it right, it's probably going to work. Cube Builder init. And this is going to, no, this is a bad place. Okay, I need to uh, create a directory. It's July 14th. Okay, and then I'll do that again. Whenever I type a wrong command, it's because of the alcohol. Okay, um, so I hope we can establish that. Um, so it's creating a bunch of YAML for me so that I don't have to do it by hand because writing an operator requires a boatload of YAML. As you can see, this is what Cube Builder already did. So a whole lot of stuff. Uh, and now we can create something that actually does something because all of this YAML does nothing for now. So Cube Builder uh, create. Okay, and first we're just going to create the resource, uh, and we're not going to create the controller. So we're going to get back to that. Now it's creating more stuff. And okay, so what did it just do? Uh, when I created the resource, it did this. So now I have a type called machine because that's the name that I put here. Uh, so if you're used to Kubernetes, you know how there's always group version kind. And I decided that the kind is going to be machine because we're going to be playing with use, useful machines, useless machines, etc. Um, okay, so let's let's look at what that was. So machine types. Here's where you define the resource. And defining the resource is basically whenever you look at YAML, there's a bunch of fields that you fill in. Uh, that definition of the field, that, that's what the resource is. So if you look at the main struct, um, we have type meta, which we're not going to talk about today. Object meta, this is where the name and the namespace are. Spec uh, on a pod, spec is where you put the, the image uh, that you're going to use, for example. And status. And status is, you know, transient information about how things are doing. Um, so let's add some fields here. I want to have a machine stack um, with a field that's going to be um, machine type. And this is where I'm going to specify, is this a useless machine? Is this a useful machine? And I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to come here to the status. And I'm just going to have status dot status. Uh, Simple, straightforward. Um, so let's see if this works. Let me save this. Uh, and now we can go here. And I need to set a bunch of make commands. I never know which ones, so I just use them all every time. Um, make generate, make manifest, make install, some kind of mess like this. So now let's say I do cube cuddle get this doesn't exist. It's going to tell me the server does not have a resource with that name. But if I do cube cuddle get machine, now it's going to tell no resources found. So the type exists. We just don't have an instance there. Now let me back out here uh, and go to another uh, screen. Uh, now I'm going to go to config samples. Uh, so Cube Builder creates uh, some sample uh, YAML for me that I can use as a starting point. So let's call this um, useful machine because we're not going to start with the useless machine. And I'm going to come here and then uh, let me refresh my list. Useful. Okay. So here I'm going to do uh, machine useful. And the spec is going to say machine type useful. OK. Now, um, if I come here and I do uh, kubectl get machines, uh, oh, of course, I need to apply that. So 
keep paddle apply file useful. All right, now if I keep paddle get machine, I have a machine there. So I have a resource. It doesn't do anything because I don't have a controller. But Kubernetes has a definition of that resource, and I can create objects uh, using that definition. Uh, so this is half the job done, basically. Um, actually, it's not. But um, something you can notice here, press the mouse. Something you can notice here is that the fields are name and age, and I don't want that. I want name, uh, machine type, and status. These are the fields that I uh, care about. So I can come here in the documentation for Cube Builder, and let me put a link there before uh, Corral asks for it again. <laughs> and you can see these directives here. They're basically comments in Go, but they have this plus cube builder. And with this, I can define which types uh, are going to be printed on, on the, which fields are going to be printed on the columns. So let's do that. I can come here, uh, go back to my machine types, uh, and then here I can paste this twice. And for the status one, that's considered a sub-resource. I'm not sure why, uh, but I need to add this one line here as well. So here. OK, so my fields are going to be machine type, and that's going to come from my spec and from the machine type um, field. The other is going to be called status and that's going to come from status dot status okay now if i come back here again and i do where was that um maybe somewhere else okay so make manifests make generate make install again uh no wrong place okay now it's gonna Put all this stuff in my cluster again. And now if I do cube cuddle get machine, uh, you can see that the fields here are the fields I want, machine type and status. And we can see the machine type is useful um, because that's what I have here. So okay, so I think we know a little bit about um, the how to create a resource. So now let's go to the controller, because the controller is where uh, well where the proverbial excrement hits the proverbial fan. So um, what do we need to do now? Yes, let's make this big. And now I'm going to do cube builder, create the same command as before. I don't want a resource because I already have one. I do want a controller. So it's going to create a bunch of YAML for me again. Um, and if we look at the files, now I have a controllers folder uh, with controller.go in there, and that's where my controller lives. So let's look at that. Controller, refresh. Okay. So what do we have here? Um, the main thing about the controller is the reconciliation loop. And reconciliation, it basically means that case when I have um, I have a current state of things that does not match my desired state of things, and reconciling is whatever needs to happen to bring those two together. <clears throat> so um, I have a, a reconciliation uh, method for my uh, machine controller um, type that I basically uh, it it basically comes from the, the resource. And the setup here is where I say, hey, um, whatever stuff is going on here is four objects of the type machine. So let's uh, let's play around with this a little bit. So I can do here, uh, I can have a log, and then I can do a log info. Um, what am I going to need here? Um, hello from machine controller. Uh, and then I'm just going to add some metadata so we can know what's what. And Rack dot. No, this is not what I want. Um, oh yeah, namespace name. Okay. Cool. Um, and the namespace name uh, is coming from rack, and rack is here. So basically, when I receive a resource, it comes with a name. Uh, when I receive a request to the reconciliation loop, I get uh, the name of the resource and the namespace that it's in. So that's what I'm using here. 
So I think we can run this. Um, let's see if it works. So now let me go here and do say make run. So now it is um, building all that stuff, compiling, etc. And this this stuff that you see here, this is basically what the output of the operator looks like on my logs. And we're going to spend a lot of time looking at stuff like this. And here I have hello from machine controller because I do have a machine that um, works, uh, that exists on my cluster. So if I come here and I go to config, uh, is it config? No, it's not config. Why am I typing wrong? Why am I drawing? I don't know. Okay, config samples. Um, here I have my useful machine and I can do uh, cube paddle, uh, delete my useful machine. Okay, now it's deleted, and if I go back to the logs, I get another call from the machine controller. So whenever um, a machine object is created, deleted, or updated, um, whenever any of those happen, this is going to run. So that is, that is how we connect the bits here. Uh, okay, so we know how the mechanics work. What cool stuff can we do here? Um, we can do, for example, uh, now we're going to need a context. If you don't know what a context is, I'm not going to explain. It's little bullshit. You can just ignore it for now. So here I can have, um, let's say, I'm going to have a get because I have the name of the resource and the namespace. I don't have the data of the resource just yet. So we need to get that. So I'm going to get, uh, here's a context. Um, what else did I need? Uh, my namespace name. And I need a machine object, a pointer to a machine object. And we don't have one, so let's create one. Var, machine, and it's going to be type, uh, the thing that I created before. Cool. So here we have this. If error is not nothing, then I have an error. So I'm going to put here a log and, no, get up, and a return call. Okay, I blame the alcohol for now. Um, there you go. Right, so here I'm going to say error, um, getting object. And here, instead of returning no error, I'm going to say um, client, ignore not found. And I'll explain in a minute why I'm doing this, um, but okay. So assuming, I'm not going to compile just now, so assuming I did this correctly and now I have a machine object with all the information from my actual object, um, what can I do with it? I can do, for example, um, if machine status status is empty, I'm going to say that if it's empty, I'm going to set it to uh, howdy. And now I need to apply that new status. So I can do, uh, once again, uh, restart status update, I think this is right. Uh, and then I give you the context and a pointer to the machine. If there's an error, I do one thing. If there isn't, then I don't. And here, I'm just going to copy the same thing as here. Nope. OK. Um, Error updating status. Okay, this should run. Uh, let's see if it runs. Uh, but this brings us to something else. Uh, updating this by hand requires me to, so every time I make a change, I need to come here, I need to exit the process, I need to make run again, I need to wait, it takes some time, I need to do it by hand. I don't like doing those things. As you can see, I'm drunk, I just want my code to work. Um, so we're going to do something different. We're going to use tilt, and that is uh, what I mentioned uh, here. So it's a handy tool that's going to make our lives much easier. Uh, so let's use tilt. Uh, to use tilt, I need a tilt file, and that is kind of like a Docker file, but for tilt. And I actually do need a Docker file because this is going to run inside Kubernetes. Uh, and that's worth pointing out. This stuff is running locally, not inside the cluster. For simple things like this, it makes no difference. But depending on what you're doing, that doesn't work. You need to run it inside the cluster. So with tilt, we're going to actually run it inside the cluster. 
so let's do that. I'm going to copy my till file from another project that I set up before. And I'm going to also copy uh, the Docker file. So now we can run tilt, uh, just tilt up. It's going to read my tilt file with all the configs. It's going to um, put, uh, it's going to open up my tilt dashboard. So <clears throat> if you have, if you have an app full of services, they're all going to be listed here. Uh, and in the case of this app, I have a, a, a few custom services, for example, recompile one, uh, it watches my source code, whenever my source code changes, uh, it recompiles it. Uh, and then what my actual service is doing, and this is going to be our controller, um, it's basically taking the binary that was recompiled here, it uh, hot swaps the binary inside the container, restarts the process. Uh, so basically I can hot reload into Kubernetes without having to think about it, and it just happens like magic. And I'm going to make it a little a bit bigger, and these are the same logs we were looking at before. So same thing, but now I don't need to compile anything by hand. Um, all right, now, uh, where were we? Yes, we wanted to run this stuff. So I don't have any calls here, probably because I don't have any machines running. So let's run a machine again. Um, I'm going to do uh, kubectl get machine watch so I can see uh, my machines as they uh, get updated. And I'm going to come back here to my YAML folder and I'm going to I'm going to maybe try to type correctly. Kubectl apply useful. Okay, so now you can see that at first our status was empty and then it was updated to howdy. So that's basically what we wrote here. Um, and if we look at the, the logs on the operator, you can see hello from machine controller when it just received the machine object with the empty status. And once again, hello from machine controller when we updated the status. So every call, uh, we get something here. We could make these logs better, but I don't feel like it, so we won't. Okay, now um, let's do some more fun things because this works, but it's boring. Um, okay, so let's say that, well, we've been working with a useful machine, and this is a talk about useless machines. So let's do some logic for that. I'm going to have a variable here called machine type, and it's going to be machine.spec.machine type. And then I'm going to do a switch on machine type. So if the machine is useful, we're going to do one thing. If the machine is useless, we're going to do something else. So here's what we're going to do. If the machine is useful, I'm just going to say that the status is going to be Okay, because um, uh, this is not a talk about useful machines, so we're just not going to mess with them. Now, if a machine is useless, uh, then you're in trouble, because then I want to delete this machine. So I'm going to set the status to delete. And up here, uh, I'm going to check for these. So if machine dot, nope, I can't type. I had one sit of alcohol, that's why. If machine dot status dot status equals OK, then I just want to return and do nothing because I don't care about useful machines. Now, <clears throat> if the machine status is delete, then we're going to get in trouble. But let's just run this first and see what happens. So did I do my code correctly? Is this going to compile? Um, okay, it did compile, so we're happy. Um, probably nothing's going to happen because we only have um, a useful machine. It should change to delete at some point. Uh, it should change to OK. It didn't, so I probably screwed this up somehow. Uh, right, because this should be here maybe, and okay, I did something wrong. Let me try to figure out what, maybe this should be here. Oh, no, no, I know what I did wrong. So this is silly. 
Uh, I, I changed the status here, but I didn't put an update status call after it. So of course it was never gonna work. Let's see if this works now. So what happens when you do it live, you make mistakes. <laughs> Okay, compiled, that's a good sign. And it ran, that's a good sign. And it did not change to okay. So I screwed something up and I don't know what it is. Mm. I Does think you, know need to, you need to move it even down. Right, like you need to move the the updating block to no, underneath that, the switch. That was. Oh yes, yes, yes. Thank you. It's good to have someone sober um, watching as I do this. Let's see now. So in, in these intervals when we're waiting, I always like to tell stupid computer jokes. On the next one, I'm going to tell you. Um, okay, so now it's okay. So thanks for your contribution. Uh, I would not have figured this out without you. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have a machine with status okay, but it's a useful machine. We don't care about useful machines. Let's create a useless machine. So I'm going to copy. Uh, Tmux is going crazy. Copy useful into useless.yaml. Okay. And now I can open that. Useless uh, refresh. Okay. So this is going to be machine useless. And my machine type is also going to be useless. All right. Now we can run that. kubectl apply file useless. And as you can see, the status uh, down here went to delete for the useless machine. Okay, so now let's figure out how to delete this thing. Because uh, we're not fans of useless machines and we want them all to be deleted. Uh, okay, so here we're going to need, um, if the status is delete, we're going to do if error once again. Uh, resource delete, context, pointer to machine. If I have an error, I do something. Um, and we're going to copy the same thing as before. Um, and here the error is going to be couldn't delete object. OK. Uh, but if we do delete the machine, then we're going to make a fuss here, because that's the whole thing we want to do. So. Um, Useless, machine, deleted, exclamation marks. Uh, okay, and I messed something up again. What did I mess up? Line 64. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the joke is uh, that I will tell you a UDP joke, but you might not get it. Get it? Uh, did this run? Yes, it ran. Uh, and now I have two deletes here. And if I look back at my logs again, so here's what happened. Um, useless machine deleted. Error getting object. So why are we getting an error? So what is error getting object? That's from resource get. And why am I getting an error? Because I'm trying to get a resource that doesn't exist anymore. So if you remember what I said in the beginning, um, the reconciler is going to be called anytime a resource is modified, created, or deleted. So that's why we need to uh, pay attention to the fact that sometimes we're going to get requests uh, that refer to resources that don't exist anymore. So that's why I put ignore not found here, because uh, if I hadn't, uh, then we would have like a huge, like a panic looking kind of error message, and it's pretty ugly. So, here we're just getting a message hey, the thing doesn't exist. Uh, we have, we couldn't uh, error getting object, and that's all. 
Okay, now we have a bit of a problem here. So let me clean this up. Uh, and the problem is that when we turn the useless machine on, Kubernetes turns it off. I turn it on, Kubernetes turns it off. And that is kind of what we wanted to do, right? Um, if you remember this, um, there you go, we have it. But we're still halfway through the top, so we need to do something fancy. Um, and now we're going to do the playful machine. And that's going to be more fun. So here we're going to have useful, useless, and case playful. And I'm not going to write all of this by hand because it's mostly just go. There's no Kubernetes stuff here, so you're not missing out on anything. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this. Uh, so a bunch of shenanigans here and a couple helper functions at the bottom. And we don't need to go through this because it's just silly Go stuff. All right. Did I do something wrong or does it compile? I would tell you a TCP joke, but then I might have to tell you again. Did you get it? Did you get it? Uh, okay. So this compiled. So now we need um, a playful machine. So uh, I'm going to copy useless into playful.yaml. I'm going to come here and do playful. We crash this list. There you go. Machine playful. Machine type playful. OK. And now I'm just going to show things to you a little bit differently here. Uh, wait, did I type the right thing? Yeah, so um, Tmux is doing some, it's acting crazy a little bit. I don't know why. OK, so we have a useful machine there. And now we're also going to have a playful machine. So cube cuddle, apply, file, playful. And I'm so proud of this. It's so silly, but I'm so proud. So what you can see down here is the little finger of the machine trying to go towards the little button. Uh, and then it goes, and it comes back, and it goes, and it comes back, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and when it finally reaches the button, uh, then you're going to see what happens. But let's hope it does. There you go. So it switched itself off. See how silly that is? I'm so proud of it. <laughs> uh, okay. So now we have uh, also, in addition to the simple useless machine that we have here, uh, we also have the oh shit, no. we also have the machine that messes with you a little bit, right? Cool, right? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, now um. I'm one of those crazy people uh, <laughs> who just live inside the terminal, and I don't like buttons, and I don't like using the mouse, and you know, typical Linux nerd. But some people do. So let's assume you have a, a, a sense of style, and you want to put things in a browser and show your status in the browser, so all your friends can like type buttons on their phones and look at the status of your playful machine. So you're going to need a way for them to do that on the web. Now, I'm not going to write a web server here. I'm just going to pretend that I'm writing a web server and I'm going to tell you how you would look things up. So we're going to need, um, we're going to need it so that whenever you create a playful machine, um, you create a web controller that's basically going to monitor what's going on on the machine and put that on the web. I'm not going to create, write the logic to put it on the web. I'm just going to do the controller part. Um, so we need something that creates a web controller for each playful machine. Um, and once the web controller is uh, exists, it needs to not only be able to monitor web objects, uh, it needs to be able to monitor machine objects. So the machine controller only looks at machine stuff. The web controller is going to need to monitor the machine stuff in order to update the web stuff. 
I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, ask me a question. Um, okay, so let's do that. Now, uh, when you're using Cube Builder, uh, there are two ways to have uh, basically an operator with multiple controllers. There's the right way, which would require rewriting a lot of stuff here and doing it differently. And then there's the, the way I'm going to do so. There's the right way and the way we're going to look at it. Uh, the right way is not that much more complicated. You can just read the docs, but it's inconvenient right now, so I'm just going to do it the wrong way. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back here. Uh, I'm going to go into my controllers folder, and I'm just going to copy uh, my machine controller into a uh, web controller. Uh, and I'll fix it later, but that's the spirit. And then I'm going to go to the resource definition, and I'm also going to do the same thing. So I'm going to Copy my machine type into web types of go. Okay, now back to Vim. Um, let me refresh this. Machine. Uh, no, I don't want machine. I want, oh, you're seeing my IRC messages in the corner there. Um, okay, so this is my web controller, but this is all machine stuff because I just copied it over. So I'm just going to come here and replace machine with web. Uh, and then I'm going to come here and replace machine lowercase with web. Now, if you're really paying attention, you're going to notice that we don't have API web reading in Kubernetes. We have API machinery. And it took me uh, maybe an hour to figure this out when I was first doing this. So don't do that. Um, so I'm going to delete all of this machine controller logic because I don't need it. So this can all go. I'm just going to have a log here, and it already says hello from web controller, and that's all we're going to need for now. And these extra fun functions also, we're not going to need them. Um, now let's go to the type definition uh, and do the same thing. So we can just replace machine with web, go up again. Um, no, this, okay. And then I replace uh, machine lowercase with web lowercase. Once again, we don't have API web read, we have API machinery. Okay, and I think all the fields here, web type or whatever, it's fine. We're not going to play with this anyway, so we can just leave it there, it doesn't matter. Um, okay. What else do we need to do? Let me think. Uh, Let's come back here. Um, I'm going to need to apply all of that stuff. So make, manifest, make, generate. It's probably in the wrong order. Make, install. OK. And we need to go back to the samples here and create a web object. So I'm just going to copy something here into web.yaml. Uh, and I'm going to open it from them. Okay, so the type is now going to be web. Uh, the name is going to be web fun, I don't know. And web type is going to be hello. I don't know, this doesn't matter, we're just testing. Uh, now I can do kubectl, wait, not here, let's do this here. kubectl get um, web and watch. No, you don't have a resource called web. Yeah, of course you don't, they forgot one step. Uh, the step I forgot was that because I'm doing this the hacky way and not the way that the manual says, I need to come here and, um, what was it? Um, config CRD basis. Uh, and then I need to apply the last one by hand. So kubectl apply. Yeah, so this is this is why it's hacky. So if, if, you, if you were doing this right, you wouldn't need to do this by hand. Because we're doing it wrong, uh, then we do. So, kubectl get web. Okay, um, basically, what I want to show is kubectl get web. Uh, it tells you no resources found, uh, which is different from kubectl get trash, which says it doesn't exist. So, now we do have a web type already, uh, same as when we created the machine type. Um, okay, so let's apply. Kubectl apply the web file. No, I don't have 
See, I blame the alcohol. I should start drinking a light Cody more often because then I can just blame everything on the drink. Uh, okay, cube pedal get wet. Now I have a wet fun object uh, of the type hello. But uh, there's something here that we're not going to be happy with, and this is web controller. We're supposed to get hello from web controller, and if we look at here, um, we are not. So if I do web controller, nothing found. It's not here because I forgot. Once again, an important step, and that step is that I need to go on main.go, and because I did things the hacky way, I need to copy all of this and say hi, so this program has a machine controller, but hey, guess what? Surprise, it also has a web controller. Ta-da! Now we should get a hello from web controller here once this is done, recompiling. And I'm out of um, TCP or UDP jokes, so I'm just going to drink the silence for a second. Please share yours, though. Okay, hello from web controller because we do have a web object. So cool, things work. I don't want to be creating web controllers by hand though. So let's let's fix that. Um, machine controller. Uh, and I'm gonna copy this once again because like we're 40 minutes in. Um, and this is just boring type, you already know how this works. So I'm going to put a bunch of trash here on them first, and then I'm going to explain. So there's this. And I'm going to put some stuff here at the bottom. Nope, not this. No, nope, get out. Get out. Get out. This. Here. Okay. Um, okay, and this goes here, and I think this shouldn't be a method. I always do this wrong. I always have to fix it and then refix it in the middle of the talk. So, okay, now um, let's look at what we're doing here. So this, uh, this is basically the same as the YAML we did before. So web.yaml. So this and this are the same, uh, but here I'm doing it in Go and here I'm doing it in YAML. But it's basically the same thing. The only difference is that here, I'm saying that the name of the object is going to be the name of the machine, dash web. Uh, meanwhile, here, I'm just saying the name is webcon. That's the only difference. And I'm going to, I'm going to use this so I can get uh, basically an empty web object uh, that I'm going to create. Uh, and here, I'm going to use uh, create or update. Uh, the way create or update works is, i make this big. So I'm going to create an object. Uh, it's going to be based on the properties that uh, are on these on this object, which I'm, going to, I'm creating on the function that you just saw. And if the object is already there, I'm going to update the object, and I'm going to update the object. Oh shit! <laughs> and I'm going to update the object with this function. Now, as you can see, this function doesn't do anything. Uh, and the point is, we're not doing any update. We're just using this function to create a thing if it's not there yet. Uh, so we're going to see a bunch of uh, objects not updated because no change or something something in the logs. Um, so yeah, this is pretty common. We have a log line here. Uh, and if you're wondering, by the way, where's my cursor? Um, why does the completion thing never work when I need it to work? So, um, Usually, when I'm writing the code, uh, here below it tells me like the types of things and stuff. And right now it's not doing that, and it's annoying, and I don't know why. But what I wanted to say is that um, the joke that I usually say when Zen decides to work is that oppress here is not uh, a comment on the systemic oppression of capitalism. It's just because the return uh, of this function is called operation result. So oppress. Um, yeah, the joke would work if them were helping you, okay? Uh, okay, so now this is probably already running uh, because Coach is very smart and already picked it up. Um, okay, it's running. Uh, so 
in theory, if I create a playful machine now, um, the machine controller is going to create a web object for me. So let's see if that works. So, um, cube paddle, get web and watch. And here I can do cube paddle, apply, playful. And there you go. So now we have machine playful web. So we know that when I create the playful, this feels like a joke directly assisted by Golang Hazen. Yes. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, where was I? Right, okay. So now we know that the machine controller can create web objects that are then going to be handled by the web controller. And we know that the web controller is working because here we can see web controller and I don't see my message here, so I'm going to just hide it by hand. Why is the search not finding it though? What an ass. Okay, there is a hello from web controller here somewhere in the middle of this mess. So because every time the little, the little finger thingy on the status updates, uh, I get a new message here, so we have a lot of trash here. Oh, there you go. Hello from web controller. If any of you work with Mozilla, can you please fix this thing? Because, oh, not, not. I blame the alcohol. Never mind. Um, okay. So let's continue. Um, the thing though is how many hello from web controller we can find here? Just a couple, right? Yeah. And the point is we did a lot of updates to the status here and the web controller was not called. And that doesn't work if I want to put my status updates on the web. Um, and the reason is the reason the web controller was not called is that here, uh, I have my web reconciler. Uh, I set it up and I say the web reconciler is only for web objects. So of course, it's not going to, uh, updates to machine objects are not going to run through this because I'm not telling it to. So let's do that. And once again, I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to copy some code here because it is too long and boring. And once again, I'm going to put some trash here. And then I'm going to explain. Okay, so I can save this already. For this for function here is actually kind of like an alias, a wrapper for a watch function that looks sort of like this, but slightly different. Now, what is this watch doing? It's saying that whenever there is a thing, uh, from a machine object, I'm going to do, um, you know, magic so that I can map those things into, um, controller dot request objects. And these objects are going to consist of name and namespace. Now, if this sounds familiar to you, it's because reconcilers, they receive, um, control dot request, um, bits of data. And those control that request bits of data, they do contain a name and a namespace. So basically, I'm saying, hey, there's a bunch of crazy Kubernetes stuff going on. I want to turn that bunch of crazy into something that my reconciler can read and understand. And that's what we're doing here. And now, because I'm basically saying watch the web objects and watch the machine objects, every time there is a creation, deletion, or update to either machines machine objects or web objects, either of the two, I'm going to get a call on this reconciler. Now, that's going to make things complicated because when you start writing your code here, you're going to have to first figure out if what you're dealing with is a machine or a web object. Uh, but, I mean, I, I assume you can figure it out. And now, um, let's assume this works, and then I'm going to show it to you. Okay. So now if I create a playful machine again, we're going to get a ton of updates here. And that is my machine trying to, you know, go to the little button. But something you can see is that now I have a ton of uh, hello from my controller. And that's because um, not only is my web controller being called when a web object gets changed or updated or created, um, I'm also get the web controller is also getting called whenever anything changes on my machine. Um, and so, yeah, that's why you're seeing all the stuff here and there's a bunch of 
web controllers that it's not highlighting. Yeah, so there's like 40 of them. And that is basically what I had to show you. So now you know how to create a custom resource, um, you know how to create a controller, you know how to use a controller to create resources, um, update resources, delete resources, you know how to make um, a controller create an object of another type, and you know how to make um, a controller watch different types of objects. So for example, um, maybe you have a database controller and it's watching for specific pods and if your database pod dies and gets brought back to life with Kubernetes, then maybe your database controller is going to do like database migration to fill that database with random data that your application can then use. I don't know, something like that. My point is you can get creative and do a bunch of stuff. Um, so that's what I had to, to show you and if you have questions, feel free to um, do the thing.